We're getting word that American space engineers may have purposely blown up an unmanned rocket in Virginia last night. CBC News just working right now. Our news team is doing that to confirm this latest development. I just want to have you take a closer look at what happened on the launch pad yesterday. You're looking at months of work, hundreds of millions of dollars just going up in flames. On board were supplies and equipment bound for the International Space Station. And there were also science experiments, including one from a Canadian elementary school. With more on that explosion and what it could mean for NASA, we have reached retired Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield. You know his face very well. He joins me by Skype from Toronto. Chris, as you watched that, um, what questions went through your mind? Well, Sahana, uh, unfortunately, uh, doing something as complex as uh, exploration, um, it doesn't always go perfectly. And I was an astronaut during a few rocket failures, including the worst we've ever had, I think, which was the Columbia accident, the shuttle uh, disaster in 2003. Initially, of course, you just feel a loss uh, at all of the work and all of the disappointed workers, the students, everyone that was involved with that flight. The cost of it, of course, um, is, uh, is something that can't be ignored. But your real focus immediately starts coming around to why, what exactly failed. I'm uh, going to have to piece that together and figure out how we can get that type of vehicle safely back to flight again. You know, I was speaking with the project coordinator for the students that, you know, you were talking about as well. They're in Kamloops, B.C. They had put together a project. They worked months on it. It was up on that rocket, and they were watching all of this happen. But anyway, the coordinator was hearing that the rocket was blown up on purpose and getting word that the students were going to have another shot at sending an experiment up there. Uh, does, would that make sense? Well, every rocket we launch, uh, of course, if during during launch, if something failed in the rocket and it started losing directional control, if it started turning towards some place where people are living, you always want a backup plan. And so every rocket like that that ever launches has uh, the ability to blow it up, has extra explosive on it just to start so it'll self-destruct. Even the space shuttle had that on it. Um, fortunately, we never had to use it, yeah. but it's just to protect the population. And in this case, the rocket had already failed. The engine had failed. It was starting to tumble, but they just did the right conservative thing, sort of like all of the people that did the right thing around Ottawa, um, helping protect the people that were there. And they push, the, you turn a key and you push a button and it, uh, it destroys the rocket just to make sure that it does a minimal amount of harm. So do you know that the rocket was, the, the key was turned, so to speak? Uh, in the press conference yesterday, Frank Culbertson, who's a former astronaut, yeah. he lived on the space station, he, he said he thought it had been, but he wasn't absolutely sure. And uh, it's just normal procedure. Mm -hmm. I visited those people at the Kennedy Space Center as an astronaut. They're guys that you want to know. And, uh, and they take the job really seriously, and they're protecting the general population when something goes wrong. So um, they may have. But that wasn't what caused the rocket to fail, of right. course. That was just an extra precautionary measure after the rocket was already tumbling back to earth and in in you know using plan b in turning that key uh, who are they protecting well if the rocket started to veer off course and yep. had, we launch right on the coast of florida so that the rocket launches over the ocean over an uninhabited area uh, in fact, the launch had been delayed one day because there was a little one-person sailboat out in one of those big areas over the ocean, and they just don't want to risk anybody's life. So, But in this case, it, they didn't need to, really, because the rocket was already falling down. But if it had been 30 seconds later, then it's conceivable it could have threatened someone else. So it's just one extra layer mm -hmm. of security and conservatism, and it's just, it's just a good idea. And uh, fortunately, in this case, nobody was even hurt, let alone killed. Of course, there's a big expense, and we'll have to figure out what failed. But, uh, but the bottom line is uh, rocket launches are complicated. Space flight is hard, and nobody got hurt. Big expense, hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, people say money makes the world go around. In this case, uh, what will happen with the future of space travel and the private sector's involvement in space travel? You know, as an astronaut, as someone who, who's in the know, what concerns does that angle of the story have? 
Well, I think it really points out the strength of the fact that it's an international space station. We're not just counting on one country or one company's rocket capability in order to keep the program viable. In fact, just a few hours later, a rocket launched from a Russian rocket launched from Kazakhstan, and it docked this morning with a bunch of supplies to the space station. There's an American-built rocket launching in December that'll bring more supplies to the station, and there's a crew launching in November. So. Uh, we don't want to be dependent on just one rocket, and I think that's one of the lessons we really learned. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to have any sort of monopoly if you can help it. And the fact that SpaceX and Boeing, two big American companies, are building new spaceships to take astronauts up to space, I think it just provides for redundancy and therefore health of the whole program. You know what? I remember seeing you when you were up there in space, and uh, Canada was so proud. Do you miss it? <laughs> so, Hannah, I, I try not to miss things. Um, I miss some people, but, but things are just events that happen. I'm really interested in what's going on in life right now, um, paying attention to the aerospace industry, teaching at the University of Waterloo, uh, public speaking, uh, meeting a lot of people. You know, there, there's always stuff going on that's interesting, and it's sort of based on what you've done so far in life. So as, as a tremendous an experience of serving at the Canadian Space Agency for 21 years was, I, I'm much more interested, of course, always in, in what's coming next and how to make things you know, better and more successful and safer for the people that follow.